This is the embodied form. Uh, I've been doing bits or variations of this for about 12 years. Uh, it's my main morning practice other than a kind of floor-based yoga practice. Um, I did quite a lot of yoga lying around on the floor these days, but this was designed so you could do it anywhere. Um, particularly back in the day, I was often in different locations. I still am sometimes where I can't lie on the floor. Uh, you can do it outside, for example, if you don't even have space in your, in your room. Um, so it's designed to be done standing up. Uh, it's designed for a few reasons. So first of all, it's just like mobilizing the whole body. And there's one bit of it particularly that's just about mobilizing the joints and bringing body awareness. You can just do a body scan, but when you move, it's easier to feel. And, and, and that sort of tension can work that out a little bit. It can just make feeling easier for the whole day. Uh, there's just the physical benefit of loosening out the joints of the body and we'll go through all the major joints of the body with it. There's a few other bits though in addition to that that are more than just like a kind of movement fitnessy kind of thing. Um, it is an embodied form so the idea here is we're building body awareness and we're working with ourself. So there's a bunch of movements in it that are about finding one center, getting into one center of gravity particularly Aikido based influence, but I still find this very helpful when I've been working at a computer and I'm all up here getting into my center, I find very, very helpful. Uh, it's just counteracts a lot of tendencies of the modern world. Simple stuff with breathing and movement, that's often the heart of a lot of embodied arts. There's a good place to start there. Um, there's the body awareness part, and then after that, we have um, uh, some movements that are testing centering. Now, what you'll see is these um, movements could be different when I do the form in different ways. If you've trained with me in different times or even just different days, you'll see slight variations. The key principle here though is we're, we're adding some pressure and then uh, it might be like a wrist lock or a long lunge, adding some pressure that we can then relax around and practice that relaxing under pressure skill. Uh, which is very useful. So another thing we can do in the middle of the form is either some EYP, a lot of embodied yoga is standing, I'll add that in these days. Uh, that was not invented when I started doing this, so that's something I often add in. Or we'll do four elements, reminders of the four elements. Um, there'll be sometimes shaking to loosen off the body generally. It's another method of getting into the whole body, getting body aware. Um, and a couple of other bits at the end. There's a free movement part, which when I demonstrate, don't feel like you have to copy. In fact, that's the point. Do not copy that. This is a freedom practice rather than a form practice. It's like the bit of freedom in the form. Um, the point here is to follow our body and let a process happen. Let the body unfold in its own way. Let the body as verb express rather than impose form on the body. Um, so it's like a mini, you know, one minute fire rhythms class. And in fact, I sometimes have a 10 minute wave that my friend Adam gave me that I'll dance instead of uh, doing that one minute where I go for a whole 10 minute process of letting the body move around. And don't copy me. That's the point. You're feeling your own body moving in your own way. And that's quite different on different days. I might make noises, uh, might get on the floor, what, whatever. So yeah, do that's very much the part that you don't just impersonate. And there's often a two-step or an Arimi Tenkan in there. So this is this move from Aikido. Um, and then the purpose of, the purpose of that is that you can actually input form again. It's a, it's a nice shape to go, how am I and how do I want to be? You can do that with the whole form, however. So even like the sort of joint mobilization parts, you're noticing it's not just exercise where you're watching the TV. It's not even just mindfulness. There's this third level, which is how am I doing that? how we are is embodiment um, and also you know what manner do I want to build do I want to do this in a really sensual way or do I actually want to work on slowing down to build that slow steady embodiment it's funny even just doing it twice changes my um, my voice a little bit okay so we're working on the how uh, both observing and changing awareness and choice the classic EFC things as much as the what throughout and that two step at the end is a way to do that. Uh, often I'm finishing with some, uh, again, an ABC centering. You can do that at the beginning as well. Uh, bow, like a gratitude practice is quite a nice kind of positive, emotionally uplifting thing to be going with or an intention to be taking it into the day. So they're the parts. There'll be the breathing part, coordinating just movement. These moving from the hips, from the center, two or three movements usually like that. Then there's the circles. 
The easy way to remember these, and it is modular, so if you only had one minute, you could just do the breathing, or you could just do the central part. If you had two minutes or three minutes, you could just do the circles, is you're starting at the bottom and then working up, working each joint one at a time. So like the toes, the ankles, knees and ankles, the hips, the shoulder, the chest, the shoulders, the eyes, the wrists. So you're basically working each of the major joints of the body um, so you don't sort of have to remember it too much. It's all there and it doesn't matter if you miss any out. Uh, then the centering would be the things like the wrist stretches or the deep lunges or sometimes balances, yeah, um, where you're, you're standing on one leg and um, observing how you get, get stressed with that, work with that, doing a stretch, observing how you might tense up and then you can breathe and relax and unstress yourself. So that's kind of some of the beauty of that. Um, the beauty of also of a form is that you see how you deviate. So if you do this in the same way every day, you actually have a structure to it. Maybe you decide just to do a one minute version or the full 10 to 12 minute version. Um, you can actually start to see how you do it differently each day in the same way as, you know, with the EYP poses, you'll see how you'll deviate from them and that actually reveals something. So that's in itself interesting. Um, yeah, then there's the free movement part. Then there's the, uh, the two step. Um, I'll break the two step down for you here. So put the camera on the feet. People get confused with a two step because there's often little movements, but the main um, parts of it, it's a remi, it's entering in Tenkan, which is open and transform. Americans call it two step because it's simpler. You step forward, that's step number one, turn around 180 degrees. Now this is the bit people get wrong. You step back and the little movements of the foot just stop your knee twisting. So you can do these little slides with the foot, but the main thing is there's two main steps. is that step forward, which is just walking, 180 degrees, so like turn to face the opposite wall. And this is something we do less often in life. People now want to step forwards again, instead you step back. Yeah, so if you do that quick, you can add those little movements to stop the knees getting twisted. It's more like you're sort of sliding on ice. And again, you're moving from the hips, so it's a centering practice as well, like at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> but in that, you can add in different qualities. So you could add in, um, you know, doing it in a light, airy way. Yeah, so you can kind of, you know, doing the kind of skippy version. Or you could do, ah, like a really fiery way. Ah, ah, yeah, or a watery, flexible way or anything else you wanted. So you're using it as a sort of movement workhorse. And what you get with a two-step is quite a lot of movement in a short space. So you're able to use it in a very versatile way without having to, you know, have a huge amount of room. It's just, just a, it's a very simple move. Um, Cause it's unfamiliar to most people. It can be interesting to see patterns of trolls around learning it as well, but that's a slightly separate thing. Okay, so um, they're the main pieces of it. There's another video which I'll just go through it all, you know, one piece at a time and won't explain it too much. Um, obviously, if something feels like it's hurting you or it's damaging, you don't do it. Uh, you could expand parts of it. Sometimes it's really interesting to do like one exercise like this one for like 20 minutes. Yeah, do you take, pick one exercise and just do it a lot. Um, you know, there's maybe there's one bit you particularly want to work on. Uh, maybe there's another movement form like extra yoga that you want to put in the middle as part of your practice. That's okay. That's okay. Um, what I would say is notice what changes you make to a form because that in itself reveals patterns. So there's the embodied form. Uh, on EFC, it's often something people do uh, every morning as part of their just general wake up practice. And so this is something I do myself and at least parts of it. If I'm in a rush, it might only be bits of it because um, I just find it benefits me. So I, I hope it benefits you.